welcome to the Geomastic channel. In today's video, we will be covering how to find circumference of a circle, which will lead nicely into how to find the length of an arc. If you'd like to take notes as we go, head down to the description and click on the link to the printable guided notes worksheet, which will follow right along with this video. Now, first of all, we're going to define what exactly a circle is. Now, circle is the set of all points equidistant from a given point called the center. So the center right here, any point on the circle is the same distance away from the center as any other point. That distance we call the radius of the circle. Now, because a circle isn't a polygon, it oftentimes kind of plays by its own set of rules. The first of which that we're gonna talk about today is what we call the perimeter of a circle, or better known as the circumference of the circle, which is again, just the distance around the outside of the circle. Now to find the circumference, you have to know the length of either the radius of the circle or uh, the distance across the circle through the center, which we call the diameter. So this whole distance here is called the diameter. And really, if you know one, you know the other because um, the diameter is just double whatever the radius would be, or the radius is half of the diameter. Um, now, really, the only other um, measurement that you need is a uh, value that, regardless of the size of the circle, is always constant, and this is the value of pi, or you've probably seen it approximated as 3.14. Now, that means it takes 3.14 diameters, 3.14 diameters, to wrap around the outside of the circle because pi is really just a ratio. Um, pi is the ratio of the circumference of the circle to the diameter. So you can think of pi as circumference over diameter. Okay, so again, 3.14 diameters wrap around the outside of the circle. Now 3.14 is an approximation but really any numerical representation of pi is an approximation due to the fact that pi is an irrational number. Uh, the decimal value that um, does not terminate, does not repeat, makes it irrational. So to um, kind of get by that fact, we've got 3.14 as an approximation. You can use the pi button on your calculator, which will round to maybe the eighth or ninth decimal place, depending on how many spaces your calculator has. Um, but you can also just leave your answer in terms of pi, meaning your answers to these types of problems will just have a pi in the answer. Uh, and that's what we're gonna do today. So to find the, um, the formula for the circumference, we're gonna use this approximation for pi as the circumference over the diameter. What we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of make this into a little proportion. So if I put that pi value over one, we can put any value over one that doesn't change the value. We've created a little proportion. And if we take the cross product of this proportion, we can see that C times one or circumference times one is just C. And then diameter times pi is just diameter times pi. So the circumference of any circle is just equal to the diameter times pi or pi times the diameter. Okay, so what does this look like in an example? So let's say that in a circle, we have um, a radius of six inches. Okay, so this is just a radius to the center of the circle. A radius of six inches, and I wanna know what the circumference of this circle would be. So I have my formulas that the circumference is equal to pi times the diameter. So the only value I really need to know is the diameter. So if the radius is six inches, the distance across the entire circle through the center, we know we have another radius of six inches over here. That makes the diameter 12. So I know that the circumference is equal to the diameter, 12, times pi. Okay, so if I needed a decimal value, I can again use the approximation of 3.14. I can type this into the calculator, 12 times pi, which is fine. But again, I'm gonna leave my answer in terms of pi. I'm not gonna round or approximate. I'm just gonna write that as 12 pi inches. Okay, this is a, um, a length, a distance, so we're gonna leave our label as inches, which looks like 12 pi inches. If you were to go ahead and multiply that out uh, into your calculator 12 times pi, you might get something close to um, 37.7 inches. So depending on how um, your question is asking for the answer, 
either one of those um, would be fine. Okay, so that's really it. That's all it takes to find circumference. You just need the diameter, you attach your pi, leave it in terms of pi if you wish, or type it and get a decimal answer. Now, what if you don't need the length of the entire circumference? Maybe you're just after um, a portion of the circumference or just the distance of a small arc, or a large arc for that matter. Okay, so say you just want to find just a portion. So maybe you just wanna know that distance. So arc AB. Maybe you just want to find that. So this is what we call um, the length of an arc. If I want to find this distance here, it's called the length of an arc or a fraction of a circle's circumference. Okay, so the only other value that we need to know to find the length of an arc, so remember for circumference we had to know, uh, we had to know a diameter or a radius. The only other value we need to know is what we call a central angle of that arc. Okay, so the central angle, which is in degrees here, so if I know this central angle, I know the measure also of the arc. Okay, so don't mix up that the measure of the arc is different from the length of an arc. The measure of an arc is in degrees. We're talking about a degree measure out of 360, so all the way around the circle we talk uh, about a circle being 360 degrees. The measure of the central angle that bounds the arc, okay, the measure of this central angle, we'll just call it x degrees for a second, the measure of that central angle is the same as the measure of that arc. Okay, so if I go all the way around the center of the circle, that's 360 degrees, just as if I went all the way around the outside of the circle, that would be 360 degrees as well. Okay, so I need to know the measure of that arc, which is the measure of the central angle, as well as the value of either the radius or the diameter. Okay, so that's what we need for arc length. Now, why do we need to know this angle or the measure of that arc? That tells us what fraction of the circle our arc represents. Okay, so for example, if I had a circle, I said here's point A, here's point B, and now we're looking for the length of that arc right there. Okay, what portion or what fraction of the circle is this arc? What portion or fraction of the circle is bound by that arc right there? Well, you might look at this picture and see pretty quickly that if this is a 90 degree angle, and I've got 90 degree angles all the way around, I know that this is just a quarter or a fourth of that circle. Just the same way as if I said maybe I wanted this whole arc up here. How do I know what fraction of the circle that is? Well, it's easy to see that that is half of the circle. So if I wanted the arc length here, I would just take half of the circumference of the whole circle. Now, if it is not so easy to figure out what fraction of the circle we're dealing with, say maybe, um, if I was looking at something like this, well, what fraction of the circle is a 150 degree section of the circle? Might not be as easy to kind of just um, figure through in your head. So what do we do? To find the arc length, AB is right here. It doesn't really matter what the angle is. Okay, so regardless of what the angle is, if I want to find the length of an arc of AB, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the measure of that arc. Okay, so the measure of arc AB, and little m just stands for measure. The measure of arc AB, we're going to take that value over 360. Okay, so if it was 115, 115 over 360, that's what fraction of the circle I'm dealing with. If it was that 90 degree section, okay, 90 degrees over 360, that reduces down to 1 fourth. That's how I know it's 1 quarter of the circle. So we take the measure of the arc over 360, and we multiply that by the circumference. Okay, so it's the fraction of the circle, or the fraction of um, the arc out of the entire circle out of 360, times the circumference. That's how we get the length of an arc. Okay, and you can write your circumference as pi times diameter, or however you choose to go through it. All right, so let's do some examples. So let's put 
our formula up in the corner here. So the measure of the arc over 360. Oops. Measure the arc over 360 times circumference. I'll just put um, the diameter pi. Okay, so this is what we're dealing with here. All right. So let's say we've got our circle. I'm looking for A, this is B. I'm looking for the length of that arc right there. So we have a 12 centimeter radius and a 60 degree central angle. So I'm looking for the measure of arc AB. Okay, the two values again that you need are the radius or the diameter, one or the other, and then the measure of uh, the arc, which in this case, again, the central angle tells you the measure. So I've got everything we need. We go to our formula, we're gonna plug in our values and go from there. So the measure of arc AB, measure of the arc is a 60 degree arc. I put that over 360 degrees. Again, this tells us what fraction of the circle we're dealing with, with this little arc right there. Times the circumference or pi times diameter, which is our formula for that. Diameter being, if the radius is 12, the entire diameter, 12 plus 12, 24. Okay, the easiest way to do this, I think, is to start by reducing your fraction to its lowest terms. Um, sometimes they won't, but in this case, 60 over 360, that does reduce down to one over six. So one over six times 24 times pi. One six times 24, or one sixth of 24, that's four. Okay, and again, I'm gonna leave my answer in terms of pi, meaning I'm not gonna approximate, just leave it as four pi or four times pi centimeters. Okay, so the length of that arc right there, four pi. And I know that because the entire circumference is 24 pi. This portion is one sixth of that and one sixth of 24 is four. Okay, let's try one more. Sorry, I want the length of the major arc, in this case, the larger arc here, we're going ACB. Okay, so the length of arc ACB is what we're looking for. Okay, so what two things do we need? We need the measure of the arc in question, and we need the diameter. So the measure of the arc, um, here we have the measure of the arc that we don't want. So we've got this 90 degree 90 degree arc here, but I want the rest of the circle. So the rest of the circle here, again, out of 360, if I took 360 minus 90, what's left over, that's 270 degrees, 270. So I take 270, the measure of the arc we're trying to find the length of, over 360. Okay, 270 over 360. Another way to think of it is, if we know this is uh, a 90 degree arc, that's one quarter of the circle, the rest of the circle would be three quarters. One quarter plus three quarters gets us the entire circle. 270 over 360 does reduce down to three quarters. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the rest of what we need. 18 is our radius, so our diameter all the way across, another 18. 18 and 18, that's gonna be 36. So the diameter, 36 pi. Okay, so again, this is the circumference of the circle. What fraction of the circumference that's the length of the arc we want. So 270 over 360, again, that does reduce down to 3 fourths. 3 fourths of 36 pi. And then finally, 3 fourths of 36, or 3 fourths times 36 is 27 pi. That's it. So that's circumference and arc length. 
this was helpful for you, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the Geomestic channel if you would like to see more videos just like this. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.